Hi folks and welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. The purpose of this video is to show how to use measurement uncertainties in a calculation and how to calculate the uncertainty in a calculated quantity. So what we're looking at here is this disk shaped geometry and we're going to imagine here that the radius of this disk has been determined to be 31.2 centimeter plus or minus 0.07 centimeters the height 12.1 centimeters plus or minus 0.05 centimeters and a mass uh, has been determined to be 76.2 grams plus or minus 0.05 grams. So again, first of all, this is a hand sketch, so don't worry about um, if the geometry doesn't look exactly perfect as far as the ratio of H over R and etc. This is just a picture to help guide my work. All right, let's talk about these values. So the 0.05 grams, this is the uncertainty in the mass based on the measurement tool. Whatever, unit, whatever tool was used to measure this, it probably had a least count of 0.1 grams. The height was measured at 12.1 centimeters plus or minus 0.05 centimeters. That 0.05 centimeters is the uncertainty in the height measurement. That may be coming from a least count of the instrument. You know, the instrument may have had a uh, uh, 0.1 centimeter least count. Now you notice that the radius has a slightly larger uncertainty. And I did that for um, the following reason. You know, we may be using the same instrument to measure these two heights, but we may have measured maybe a diameter across here, across here, across here, and got different values. So this 31.2 maybe is some sort of average value, and the irregularity, you know, the fact that this is not a perfect circle, may contribute to a larger uncertainty in the radius. So that's why I purposely uh, made that value a little higher than the other two. All right. <clears throat> or I should say than the other one, the 0.05 centimeters. So now we're going to talk about how to calculate the uncertainty in the density. So this is the Greek letter rho, uh, typically represents uh, density in lots of math problems. And density is mass over volume. Now, in this example, the volume is a cylinder, and the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared times h. So the density of this object can be written m over pi r squared h, or I could write that if I wanted to, 1 over pi times m over r squared h. So now what I'm going to do is just treat the 1 over pi like a constant, and it is, and I'm going to calculate the differential of the density based on the uncertainties in the height, the radius, and uh, the mass. And I'm going to use differentials to do that. So I'm going to calculate d rho, differential of rho, and that's going to be um, taking these in this order. I'm going to do mass first, radius second, h third. So what we're going to have is uh, this 1 over pi out in front of everything. And now I'm going to calculate uh, the partial derivative with respect to m. So that's going to be 1 over r squared h, right, and then times dm. So this right here is d rho dm times dm plus Next term, I'm going to now differentiate with respect to r, keeping m and h constant. So that's going to be m over h. Now this is r to the minus 2. That's going to have a derivative of um, minus 2 r to the minus 3, right? Then times dr. And then next term. Now I'm going to hold these two constant, differentiate with respect, with respect to h. So that's going to give us an m over r squared. This is h to the minus 1. Its derivative is going to be minus 1 over h squared. So again, this quantity right here is uh, d rho dh. Then we'll multiply by dh. That's now a differential. And again, the 1 over pi is just sitting out in front of the whole thing. So I'm going to just take a moment. I'm going to pause this, look it over, make sure that I did everything right. So if you just bear with me. Okay, I'm back there. I just uh, looked it over, and I think those derivatives all look fine. Okay, so now when it comes to uncertainty measurements, you'll notice um, that some of these terms are positive, some negative. Like this thing's inherently positive. This term's got this minus sign that could come out in front of it. Um, same thing with this one. What you have to realize is that using this method, we don't know the plus or minus sign on that dr. We could have measured it too big or too small. So this quantity could be negative, making this term positive. Same thing here. So what we typically do is we take, uh, we look for, we try to be conservative. We try to calculate the largest possible differential. Um, 
in row due to these variables. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to absolute value these terms here and here because we don't know the plus or minus signs on the dr or the dh anyway. So I'm going to do here is write out where all the numbers go and then I'll take a minute and calculate it. So what we get equals 1 over pi times okay dm over r squared dh. So that's going to be 0.05. Now this tool that I have, it's difficult to get all the units in, so I'm going to put NCU for note consistent units. That's 0.05 grams over 31. Let me write that a little better. 31.2 squared times H, 12.1. So there's this term taken care of. Plus, okay, I'm going to go ahead and put the two first. Then the M, 76.2 grams. Then the DR, 0.07. So that's all taken care of over HR cubed, 12.1 times 31.2 cubed. Make sure I got everything. Uh, the 2, the M, the DR, the H. And then the R cubed, that looks good, right? Plus, next term, okay, MDH, so that's going to be 76.2. Then the DH is 0.05 over, let's see, R squared, H squared. So that's going to be 31.2 squared times H, 12.1 squared. And you'll notice, again, I didn't worry about the minus sign. I absolute valued both these terms because, again, we don't know the plus or minus signs on the dr or the dh anyway. So what I'm doing here is being conservative to calculate the largest possible uncertainty in row. Now, this is all done. Units consistent. This should all come out to gram per cubic centimeter. I'm going to take a moment here or pause this and see if I can get a value out of this. So bear with me. All right, folks, I'm back here and uh, did a lot of number crunching, and hopefully these worked out okay. But what I got for this value here is 0 0.0000191 gram per cubic centimeter. I also went ahead and calculated the density. I probably should have mentioned that earlier. And all I did is I just put our value 76.2 here, pi, 31.2 here squared, 12.1, uh, calculated a value for that. And what I got for the density is 0 0.002059 and a couple more decimals. So... Here's my calculated density. Here's the uncertainty in my density. Now I'm going to write down what my final answer should be as best as I can write it. Now, right now, I've, I've written down four significant figures here, but our measurements were only to three sig figs, and this was a multiplication division type of problem. So standard rule of thumb is you look at the least number of significant figures in your measurements, three, 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 these all have three sig figs. You know, if, if one of these had a two sig fig, that would be the least number of sig figs. But standard rule for multiplication and division is you look for the number with the least number of significant digits. These are all three. Report your answer to that number of significant digits. This density to three sig figs would be 0 0.00206 gram per cubic centimeter, uh, rounding that to a six plus or minus the uncertainty in the measure in the calculation which is going to be 0.00001991 uh, gram per cubic centimeter so again these are very very small densities well don't you know don't take any stock in that that doesn't matter this was just meant to be an example that I made up off the top of my head uh, of how to take measurements with their uncertainty and propagate the uncertainties through a calculation to calculate um, the uncertainty in the calculated value. So what I've done here is I've calculated an uncertainty in the density based on these measurement uncertainties and reported my answer to three sig figs plus or minus the calculated uncertainty. Uh, I hope this video helps demonstrate how to use multivariable differentials to estimate uncertainty. Have a great day.